friends, welcome back. As you trickle in, I'd like you all to say hello to Lulu, Marcus's and Cynthia's. Uh, just look at how cute she is. Oh my gosh. Apparently she has a dark side too. She's looking cute now, but she does rather um, vicious things behind the scenes. Also, She's an angry masturbator. Yes, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we're going to wait for people to trickle in and just do a loose chat before we get into the meat of it. But this is a perfect time to plug the interview I did with Cynthia. Oh, how cute. Look at their little 2D flicking off here at live. <laughs> Cynthia is an ex-Mormon, and we did an interview with her, um, which I highly recommend checking out. Sixth generation, was it, Cynthia? Yeah. Six sixth. generations mm -hmm. of Mormonism. And by the way, that's been a controversial uh, group that's sparked off a lot of people, a lot of hate comments towards me, dude, Cynthia, about Mormonism, uh, in fact, being a destructive cult. So we might need to do a part two and go into the bite model with that thing. Anyways, guys, welcome. So we're here on Saturday, and this is how we're um, going to do today's stream. And I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of what, what's going on, because we've been doing a lot of lives lately. So... What we're going to do here is we're going to answer questions from yesterday. That was an amazing chat, guys, uh, yesterday. And as a little, I had a lot of trepidation about that because I didn't want to sell any waves, but I wanted to talk about the proverbial elephant in the living room. Really appreciate the questions and the way that whole thing was handled. Um, on Saturdays now, once in, okay, let me just pull up the channel so you can see what the heck's going on here. So. We do something called Flashback Fridays with Marcus. Obviously, it's Saturday, so we're going to come up with a um, a different intro. But in the meantime, Flashback Fridays are kept down to about an hour. And we've done three so far, or this will be the third one. And what we're going to do um, next Saturday, please tune in on that, which appertains to what we're covering today with celebrities. So we did two interviews with Marcus where he breaks his story down. Unfortunately, we had three videos from him, which were unbelievably powerful. The only three videos that I didn't download off the previous YouTube channel before it got taken down. So we have to tell a story again, and we got halfway. So how Marcus Sawyer was recruited into Scientology is under podcast SPTV live playlist on the main channel. And we did part two, the Ventura mission. And part three is where he starts working as a staff member at the Melrose mission. And that's when he had a lot of interaction with celebrities and in particular, the same ones that I ran with. So we need at least two hours next Saturday to tell his full story, starting from the mission, um, what his hat was, which we're going to cover a little bit today, dealing with the celebrities. And then I'm going to give a trigger warning before we get to the meat of that, because it's quite disturbing. It's amazing that this man's even alive. If you guys don't mind, Marcus, um, please go sub to Marcus's channel when you have a chance. It's hard to find, so you can always find a, a link in the description box, and go, Goldie always drops it as well. But he has some amazing videos. He's been speaking out since 2015, and not only is a lot of this information relevant today, but it's it's been amazing going back through his channel and realizing just kind of how ahead of the curve you actually were, dude. And he has tons of videos going into everything, which we discussed yesterday. So before we jump into the meat of it, start answering questions from yesterday and then delve into Marcus, um, his story briefly with celebrities. Again, we're going to go into full detail next Saturday. Um, I like Mar I just like to say hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right, man. I'm uh, this week has been uh, one of those like uh, full schedule all week. And, you know, this is pretty much the last thing before get my little uh, siesta tomorrow to sort of chill and start start the week over at a funeral early this week and um, had some shows uh, to uh, help with around here in town so uh, and a lot of driving in between so uh, and and it was I thought I was getting sick maybe COVID took a COVID test no no COVID it says so um, I just got a cold scratchy throat it's probably because of the talking when you're at funerals you know you talk a lot to i got a huge family so a lot of talking i've been doing a lot of talking so uh i'm gonna rein that in a little bit hey man i just appreciate appreciate you showing up the other day because you know i know you were feeling crappy and you still had tone 40 dedication on making it to the Say what I mean, man i mean everyone goes through it it's something we all experience Yep. Right. Everybody here. 
knows what that's like. So yes, and as we talked about yesterday, it doesn't matter if your trauma in the cult was two weeks or you were in the Sea Org at the top highest levels for months. We all come out with shit because, as you said, dude, in one of your videos, they make sociopaths. We were all psychopaths. I couldn't, I couldn't possibly agree with that more. That's hard to come to terms with, by the way. And I'm still having layers peel off 15 years later. But we were made into something that we freaking weren't. Wow, yeah. man, this guy yeah. was so clever sure. on this freaking oh, trap. My mind. Ooh. We just assumed Marcus was baked yesterday. Actually, he. Oh, oh by the way, thank you for. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah. Where's Colonel Brock? Okay, there he is. Colonel was like, I want to be as high as our guest. And also, I caught a lot of flack for not smoking cigarettes yesterday. Shame on you guys. I so do I'll, not I'll, smoke that I'll rectify that immediately. You know, I appreciate that. Maybe three and a half, four grams a month for the record. So I'm not going to put my daily consumption on <laughs> You guys can suss it yourself. I don't make any bones about that. You know, I can I say something on that real quick? And I want to yeah, know if you sure. agree. I had a phobia of weed. That was the thing that got me into Scientology to begin with. That I've discussed before, but you know what? I was out for about a year and my employer was passing around a joint like always. And my programming was like, no, no, no. I never thought twice about it, but I was like, dude, I'm out for a year now. I'm not in the cult. I still feel the phobia, but fuck it. Pass the joint. I'm just going to do it this one night. So I got really high because it had been years since I had been stoned because I was a Scientologist. Not only did I have revelations and my programming actually started to kind of become available. Mm. I called him up the next day. I said, I need to buy an eighth. How much <laughs> is it? And I use that legitimately as a tool to deprogram. There's sure. no way in hell I would have been able to get into the subconscious. You smoke like a I joint did. and you start ruminating, right? But I didn't have that experience, Marcus, before Scientology. I would just get fat and I had no revelations. And so I, oh, to me, wow. it's like a tool and maybe how you would use it. Sounds rough. But when I got out, it, it became, I, you know, I was in shape or whatever. I wasn't getting fat and sitting on my ass and escaping reality. I was using it to get into my subconscious. And there's no way in hell I would have been able to deprogram without it. And I remember the first thing I was thinking is. Great for PTSD. You know? It is. And why isn't it? My first question was, why isn't it recommended by psychologists? Or, or is it? Or it why is, is this I mean, my missing? therapist says you better have your weed with you. <laughs> your therapist like, said that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I get uh, here in Louisiana, we have like really good growers. Uh, Ruston facility is like top notch. We have high, high level agriculture here. Um, and being on the you know subtropical, really fertile soils and stuff, so you can grow for miles and miles and miles. So we got a lot of agricultural science here, and they were waiting, wow. at, chomping at the bit to start breeding strains, and the strains that we get are uh, really really good. So they're like long lasting, long acting. I don't you don't need much of it. Mm -hmm. It's high. Uh, well, you know, they got all the different um, uh, blends or whatever, you know, the strains. So you got hybrids, you got indicas and sativas, and then they make other like custom strains as well. So you can sort of when you find something that's working for you, they they tend to produce it uh, consistently. So, you know. Do you mind if I jump in, Marcus? On because yeah. most of the people are yeah. in accord with you in the chats, mm. but Kimberly also brings up a good disclaimer, which is that I allergic try to, to weed. Yeah, that sucks. It's not for everybody, and you know it, it's a heavy. Um, I'm not going to debate paid. if it's a drug or a plant. Well, who cares? It's a heavy substance, and yeah, it's not for everybody. That's why I'm not encouraging people to become stoners. I'm just trying to be honest about what helped me, but I don't know if it helps other people. But people in the chat apparently they say that it has weed yeah. is how i survived and and recovering from narcissistic abuse it also helps with my i wish i was intelligent enough to pronounce that fim Fibro, no fibromyalgia the, how the fuck did you know that that's a pretty common thing too okay but, hey i use aaron's excuse i was in a call. i mean I'm, I, I'm a dumbass fairly fairly common it's not yeah, we all weed in it. Okay. We've well, it was yesterday, that. was 420. We're all a so bunch of weed heads. We're letting right, our hair down and, uh... liter literally and figuratively. <laughs> Marcus is finally wearing his hair down. I have my little fag man bun. You know, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's just easier to throw a hat on, yeah, put in the man yeah. bun or whatever. This leads us, by the way, to the very first question from the um, very funny Colonel Brock. Let's just, I want to kind of 
go deep first and get the heavy shit out of the way first before we get into the questions from yesterday. And that is, what is the picture behind your funky head? Yeah, this is this is the dude from The Big Lebowski. And I'm not in love with Jeff Bridges. I don't have a weird obsession with the movie. I just saw it on a poster on Amazon one day. And I put it up on the wall. And I'm like, and I was dumb enough to put an actual um, frame around the thing. And I needed a place to shoot when I started. So I'm like, that'll be perfect. And that is my spirit animal, if I had to pick one. Jeff Bridges, the stoner, you know, uh, just <laughs> rolling through life. I'm just <laughs> going to go find a cash machine. Over I the line. <laughs> I know. Market zero. <laughs> Market, Market zero. Market zero now, dude. <laughs> okay, okay. God damn it, Walter. You're not wrong. You're just an asshole. <laughs> oh, I should never have brought it up. Marcus knows every line from that and the movie Idiocracy. What is the fucking travesty with you, man, in fucking Vietnam? Not is that not the best movie Vietnam? ever? It doesn't matter how many times I've watched that oh, fucking thing. Oh, Brothers I, is amazing. Oh, and you know what? On script, I was thinking about it. On paper, how the hell did they even sell that thing? Because on paper, it would just look like a bunch oh, of gibberish. It, and somehow absolutely. it worked as a movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, brilliant, totally. brilliant. Um, okay, so with that question out of the way, and like I said, this ties into the celebrity crap, which we'll be getting into with Marcus in the second half. But let's see if we can plow through some of these excellent questions. So this is from yesterday. If Danny Masterson is convicted, will he be declared? That's a great question. Uh, I think I know the answer to that. What do you think, Marcus? If Danny Masterson is convicted, will he be declared? Um, I'd say it depends on money. Depends on money. What do depends you mean? on the optics. Depends on, uh, yeah, he could be. But the thing is, is the Mastersons as a whole family Mm -hmm. have uh it's not just danny here we're, you mm -hmm. know, we're talking Good about point. carol his mother and his brother uh what's his brother's name he chris, chris chris masterson, masterson. yeah mm -hmm. and then and then also there's some ties with the rabisis you know in the masterson so, of course there's a whole um, click that we'll talk about click, exactly yeah. they're very so, very tight so just to say you know if he's convicted they're going to be like and eh. maybe maybe they'll sort of like do sort of an excommunication type thing and, 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 and get him on a, a, a tip or some crap, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of like a program from the DSA that I got from CC. That was kind of like a big, before you, could you tell people what DSA and all the terms yeah. and everything? All right. So uh, a tip is a technical individual program and it's something that a case supervisor writes for you. Um, and it's basically review and 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 show, trying to show your understanding of a particular reference or a book or a series of books in my case it was every book and all the basics and all of the lecture series and all of the management series and all of the oec volumes and all and, right and, you just gave people even more mu's it's so this is the hardest part marcus of doing these interviews I only thing they need to know is that that's yeah, four keep, keep major it simple yeah it's four major like it's the whole almost the whole body of public available text to the public of scientology that they can buy um sorry i asked just carry on with library. the library we just probably lost people even more it's such a it's hard to explain it's hard to get to deal with the words to try to explain scientology and i felt bad for even jumping in to make him explain it because it's just well the short of it is is that danny uh he could be uh put into a sort of like excommunicated state where he is still able to interact with his family and and his clique or whatever mm -hmm. but he would not be in good standing it's also it's also possible that uh uh now i don't think it's probable but it's possible that they might sort of like blacklist the so to speak the mastersons and the rabisis if there's like already things going on which they call flows which are just things mm -hmm. that people are doing to one another or doing in the community uh that they don't particularly agree with and provides bad optics optics is very important for scientology right so i mean they run a super bowl ad every year um so i would say that that optics is pretty high on their list absolutely that's a very I mean, expensive ad any narcissistic organization is going to be uh, first and foremost concerned with their image and how much money they're bringing in. 
That's interesting, bro. You know what my first thought was, was absolutely, but no, they have too much money and too many people surrounding the Mastersons where if Masterson goes, they lose a whole, they would lose a, a significant and I don't think he's of their get celebrity convicted. clip. That's the next question. So excellent segue. So let me find out where that one is. Um, what do you think? Do you think? Oh yeah. Do you think, this is from Melissa Neal from yesterday. Do you think the second trial will have the right outcome this time? Excellent question. Hit it. Um, no. <laughs> it's Isn't it a civil trial in Los Angeles? We're not talking about the one where they're suing him for money. We're talking okay. about the one where he's on sexual assault allegations currently, and he's being right. retried, and, this, and it starts Monday. He's being retried in the Los Angeles County. Correct. Okay, so what more evidence could have could be provided? That would be the the, defi the defining thing with that. But like, if there's any more new evidence that could be provided, uh, in proof or proof, any kind of like tampering, because Scientologists uh, and OSA are very really trained it's like tampering in a way that's like yes. so subtle that you won't even fucking yep. notice and well marcus they got a juror on there that could have sabotaged and would have sabotaged yeah, jury tampering entire, you know something they like literally that. got somebody in on the juror uh, okay so in that case the second trial if they can prove that that there was jury tampering they don't they just skipped over it, marcus that's the we can even talk about the justice system here because i had some things i wanted to say about that okay so it was already that proven that let's just say that guy was super sus and being able to throw the entire um basically it was danny's protection about not being convicted and not only did he not get a slap on the wrist you think that would be highly illegal and i'm sure it is but that has been completely brushed over and here we are on trial two and there's already another person that's a semi sus Juror number five, I believe it was. I don't remember exactly the number, but he's on there. And he admitted to being a, a huge fan of Masterson on the 70s show. I don't know if that's enough to get him removed, but here we go with the uh, people have feelings and emotions. We don't have psychologists up there that understand the gaslighting of Scientology. We have people off the street. No. This, this is what I wanted to say kind of about the whole what chance do you have anyways with the justice system? Because when it comes to something like Scientology, the big issue, Marcus, is why do these gals take so long to come forward? That's what the that's part of what the jury, the last jury was struggling with. You and I understand Scientology and a lot of the watchers and exes do. So we understand why it took those gals forever. First of all, they have to understand that Scientology was corrupt. Something actually happened to them and they were and they were, in fact, R.A.P.E.D. because it just takes a long time to understand that any uh sexual abuse survivor will say that this is often why they go back to the abuser too so that explains the and then plus the fair gaming the terror that scientology inflicted in these gals the alleged fair gaming we have to say that even though we know what they do mm -hmm. so if if you're just somebody off the street that doesn't know too much about how scientology operates there's a good chance of being acquitted just based on the fact that i don't believe these gals has taken too damn long for them to come forward and that was an issue Sure. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, no doubt that the attorneys uh, would take advantage of that position. Um, there's plenty of evidence, Kimberly. Um, the problem is, sorry to interrupt, Marcus, but there's plenty of evidence. In fact, they only brought three people forward, but Danny's um, SA allegations, there's multiple people. I'd say there's more than enough evidence. Like I said, the main issue is the fact that they didn't understand why these gals took so long to come forward. That was just part of it. But um, and then also what evidence I guess you make a good point, Kimberly, because what evidence can you present? Right. If they were allowed to bring in the preclear folders, which would have all the evidence of the cover up, if they were allowed to bring in Julian Swartz info, put him on the stand. He's an ethics officer that said we don't use the word rape. If they were able to bring in the freaking evidence on Scientology and the PC folders that that would, you know, it's such a this has got to be the most fascinating trial ever on Scientology and celebrity mixed together because there's so many issues that Kimberly's actually triggering off in my head. And part of that is um, they really don't want Scientology in this trial. The fact that it's even spoken about at all is the first time to my knowledge that we've ever even, they just dismissed that right away in court cases. So the big issue is from the, from the um, prosecutors, how much can we squeeze this in here? Because they know that that shows the cover up. 
but they have the conundrum of we want to, the judge kind of wants to keep Scientology out as much as possible and keep it about the quote unquote facts and what happened to the gals, but that's not possible without bringing Scientology into the mix. So it's been this, if they could bring all the evidence in Kimberly, if they just had full disclosure, I believe he'd be behind bars immediately. This is, I have to say, this is my personal opinion too and conjecture but they're able to keep a lot of evidence out. And Scientology as an expert in manipulating the court system, as I've talked about many, many times before, and we're seeing it live. Do you want to say something, brother? No, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. And then do I, you agree with that? Or do you think that's not accurate? Um, or anything to add to it? The, 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 you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to give me the last few words you said because I was uh, something that Colonel Colonel Brock. Brock said, you're right. I would like to be a stone as my guest as well, man. Is he not proving that right now? What you, <laughs> what kind of strain you run in there, brother? I gotta I gotta pick that up. It's a uh, indica. It's Burkle. Burkle. Will Claire be able to explain all of those things? Great question. Did you know, Marcus, that <laughs> so Claire's testifying uh, on the behalf of the prosecutor. And they brought in her own freaking stepdad. Scientology is so evil, dude. They have no... I was just thinking about my dad who passed recently. And what if he was used by the cult to turn against me? Which I completely expected when I started speaking out. You know, I have a lot of respect for my parents and what they didn't do when they... I know they got pressure to over these last couple of years to do. Mm. But the fact that her own freaking step, stepdad would go on the stand and turn on her is just absolutely disgusting. They have no frame of reference that 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 makes them look bad irregardless of what happens so disgusting okay perfect and melissa great i was just going to tell people if you have a question because you know it's kind of i try to pay attention to what oh Marcus is she saying. did it in bold look that's what i was going to say please do it in bold or you can put at days but not confused because it'll do the little orange thing and i can see them a hell of a lot easier Will you be doing daily updates too, Doug? That's a good question, Melissa. You know, I have my hands full with just what I'm doing now, but I'm really close to the courthouse. I can get off my lazy ass and actually go over there and do videos. So that's, I'm still deciding that. Also, Aaron says he's coming out here next week. So maybe, you know, I'll probably roll down there and say hi and just see what, what does or does not happen. But he had a great idea on getting all as many ex-Seorg and as many ex-Scientologists here in Los Angeles or that want to fly out to possibly... Come out there with banners. Make it hard for Danny to walk in there with that smirk smile on his face and his coffee and his sweet suit. It would be uh, intimidating, I think. And I think it would add to the cause if people end up doing that. And if they do, I yeah, would do no doubt it would. It would be uh, <laughs> foreboding for sure. Yeah, you I know? don't think it. And, and if, you know what? Things like that sometimes will thanks, uh, awesome. have a, an effect on the uh, the judge, the, the lawyers, you know, the attorneys, like as they go mm -hmm. in you know, look at what they're dealing with. You Absolutely. Know? And he's not getting any of that. And that also ties into a question from yesterday, if you don't mind, Marcus, that um, Jay Dice had. And that is there a lot of talk about the trial in LA amongst the general public? I think normally there would be, and I'm not the one really to ask because I don't really interact much with people anyways out here, but I, there hasn't been, it doesn't seem like. I asked Tony that question uh, during the first interview, during the interview that we I did with him. And he said, there's plenty of coverage. The problem is you have to type in the right thing or Google it or something. It's not necessarily showing up. He said that might be an algorithm thing. Oh, no. Scientology yeah. for sure pays for Google for, I mean, if, if China does yeah. it, Scientology be doing it. Okay. So yeah. um, they, they suppress certain things. Maybe that's why it's hard to find my channel. I don't, I'm not saying that you're the one that brought it up to me and I didn't realize that my channel was hard to find. And I'm still not con yeah. 100% convinced that's what it is. It just could be that we, that's, I'm doing my uh, shit all wrong. <laughs> no, that's the great point, Marcus, because we can never tell if it's Scientology or not. That's why well, I that's can't accuse Scientology game. for taking my channel down, even though the way it went down. I'm not going to repeat it because it's been covered too much in the past. That's how you do perfect. And I don't want to give them any more ammunition, but it, let's just say it went down in a single day, three copyright strikes with a 24-hour period, no warning, which is no record. It's just retarded. Oh my yeah. God. Do you think it's possible that the 45 year sentence might be an issue if it was just a year? Well, I mean, if they just got him for a year, by the way, hi lady, if they just got him for a year, that doesn't equal the severity of what he did and to, and to how many gals he actually did it to. Oh yeah. The number is probably far higher. And, um, uh, you know, the, 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 on the, on the topic of them not speaking out, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like how do you how do you 
work that out in your mind when essentially when you attack a Scientologist, you're not just attacking them or exposing them as a criminal, mm -hmm. especially if they're a celebrity, mm -hmm. you are then we affecting the entirety of Scientology. So, you know, it, it's scary. Like the, the, it started out as Jane Doe's, right? Know. Remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, they wouldn't even release their names. I know. And that shows I, you how scared they were and also rightfully know. so in la like you know because what like what we were just talking about is like when they do fair game right it's not connected at all so like if exactly. they die if they die, they die. If something happens they, they well it was COVID, or well it was you can't else. prove anything with scientology right. they are master gaslighters and they do exactly what he said you, you're not going to see it that's why i've been yeah. I made it three years now on YouTube, but I'm like, they got to be planning something. Like I said, they took, I, I don't know. I cannot prove it. That's the problem with Scientology. I mentioned I have my car broken into my life multiple times and my license plates, my back and front license plates stolen, like on week two of speaking out. Mm -hmm. But I can't prove that that's Scientology. That could have been because of COVID. You right. know, we had criminals running around left and right out here in LA. So they just and likely make it, it wasn't a Scientologist. I don't think it was. I don't think usually it was, they hire private investigators to do that kind they, of stuff. Another great point. They so. use buffering. And mm -hmm. someone actually asked before if they ever uh, attempted murder. I believe that they have. Um, but again, good luck proving it. And when they if and when they do something like that, they would have many, many layers of buffering. You they want to hear operate like you want to hear something sure disturbing? sure sure trigger warning or not i mean i don't want to maybe freak anybody out here i will go ahead and give a trigger warning but uh whenever i was going through my uh, initial filings and getting uh, uh ex parte to get my children uh back after my ex-wife had left uh i had to see two different uh we were trying to locate them they'd been missing she just left mm -hmm. and uh marty battles was a private investigator in lake charles and, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, he, he, he was, he was one of the top guys supposedly in Lake Charles and, uh, he seemed pretty competent and professional and had a whole fleet and all this stuff and, uh, to locate kids, right. Kids that are gone missing and a uh, special unit. Right. And I asked him if he had worked with Scientology before and he said, yep. Why do you, why do you ask? And, uh, so that was a little disturbing to me because here he here i am hiring him to locate my children you know uh and there's a scientology was still active in, in lake charles at that time they had a building they moved to, they, they built a mission in lake charles um in 2006 the year after i moved there lovely so and it had remained there for a while and they have you know contacts there they, they operate a lot like uh you know the mafia is what i was going to say or, mafia uh, mafia mixed with uh intelligence agency is exactly mm -hmm. how i describe it so nothing including i believe murder is is above them but nothing. what they try to do is gaslight someone to death well they'll either commit suicide um themselves or get you know, cancer cancer you know my best friend who's going to be a huge actor stress died causes at, cancer you know died at 28 um, from the stress that was put on him trying to leave that's another story that i cover yeah on the channel that's real shit it's, too it is. And dude, you're lucky to be alive, which if you're just joining us, by the way, guys, we're going to do a two part special next Saturday where Marcus is going to tell his whole story and we can really get into not just the celebrity stuff because he's instrumental in selling celebrities, but just his whole story and to just show you how true what he says actually is. I'm really happy you're freaking alive, dude, because you yeah, had multiple opportunities to not be. And I, I wanted to freaking check out of here, man, just with the trauma. Can't. It's so weird. It's so, I still feel like I'm in a dream a little bit because I could never see the light at the end of that freaking tunnel. That's cool, man. Why does it have the um the bar? The bar because this is a this is a piece of uh, swag that I designed so that people well, I could stick it on stuff out in the city and they <laughs> nice. can scan it like and that. it'll take them to the channel to the song. Oh, nice! The, the official video for "Don't Give Up." That's cool. And he's talking about a song that he has on his channel, guys. And I believe he played it on the outro to one of the interviews. It's available on Spotify, too. It's uh, Pain and Suffering. Devontae LaFleur, me and Travis's. Pain uh, and Suffering. And Rick Nelson's uh, work from 2021. That sounds like a cool name of a death metal band, too, by the way. Pain and Suffering. 
Yeah. Not to make, you have to make light of this stuff, Marcus, because <laughs> oh, Jesus it was, Christ, it's too oh, much of a studio, downer. It was. No, in the studio, we were all having a ball, but like the music itself is just like... <laughs> were your bandmates like Marcus freaking come up tone man or you know stop no, no, being no. such a fucking downer there's some awesome photography that my friend John Landry did while he was there and um, no I mean it was kind of a somber mood but it was like a focused mood it was like all of the tunes on the record are sort of representative of a culmination of a whole lot of PTSD or stuff, pain and suffering right you know and, and, and reflection mm -hmm. on all of that so uh while that was the subject matter the actual production of it every you know everyone was really into it and, and it wasn't like a downtone thing or anything like that it was very uptone and your band members were not scientologists right so were they thinking you're a little over well, it was um, my brother and rick nelson that's it so really. they were and my okay. cousin played uh we did a remote session he did some my cousin moon manual His there's dad, another story i'm thinking of marcus where when you're out of the scientology I think you were an independent Scientologist and then you had a band and they were not band members, but I don't want to get into that. That's for the, that's for the special that we're going to cover. Cause we'll, sure. you already got my mind clicking off about all the stuff we're missing from your story, which is make it going to make it hard to just, you know, this is why we're doing a Q and a today. Well, it's again, my, it's Tarantino style with my brain. That's why we have, um, the, the edgy, Friday and Saturday with Marcus, where we literally and figuratively let our, let our hair down, as said before. And then we have Apostate Alex, where, you know, we break down the tech and we get the British sense of humor and perspective. This is a really nice mix, by the way. If you guys didn't check it out, Apostate Alex, Catherine Olson, amazing gal who escaped the Sea Org very recently with the help of the Athermath in 2021. We did an interview breaking That's down great. the tone scale, which went a little bit over people's heads. And Alex, I believe, is going to do a short video to kind of, you know, add some more context in that. But I think we found our niche over there by actually breaking down the tech. I mean, people just think we're a bunch of idiots who believe in Xenu. But when they see the complexity of what we go through, I think it makes a little more sense. Plus, I'm having massive realizations myself going back through this gibberish and seeing how complex it is. Marcus, we just tried to break down the freaking tone scale. And you know the chart of human evaluation? Sure, yeah. We tried to, I'm sure it went over some people's heads. Some people said it did. Some people were getting it. But at least they can get the idea of the complexity. And then we have to think on our end, how the fuck do we communicate this shit without losing people? And this is why the cult works. Because it's so secretive in a way because of the nomenclature, because of the difficulty in actually explaining it. Not just to outsiders, but to law enforcement and the Masterson case, right? How do you explain the complexity of Scientology? And a lot of the terms came up in the Masterson case too, where unfortunately you know, it was, it was those iffy complexes on, don't matter to the law most of the time. Because I know it's part of a religious belief. So yep, they can give two shits about any of that. And in video number two, which was a couple a few, couple months after we were quarantined in 2020, I said one of the things that makes Scientology stay there and why they never get prosecuted is simply the complexity of understanding it, and that the law the justice system will get snowed every time because they don't know what the fuck they're actually dealing with. And they, like you said, Marcus, they don't make it their business to necessarily find out. In my opinion, with something like Masterson and Scientology, we would need some experts up there. Like I said, if you take 12 random people. Yeah, expert and you, witnesses and experts. Not uh, just that, but a whole different way of actually doing it. You need experts that know the dynamics of Scientology, and that needs to be able to be brought in. Short of that, like you said, Marcus, I do think he'll get off too, and I hate to say that out loud. And by the way, whoever, I think it was Lady yeah. that lady that asked the question. Um, I did get the clarification on that. What's the next and, well, just real quick, it's 45 yeah. years to life, too. It's not just 45 yeah. years. But wow. like you said, he probably won't. I hate to say it, man, but I don't think he's going to be. I'm sorry, dude. Either. Yeah, I mean, right. You know, I mean, my when my niece is, was dating a dude who burned a trailer down, you know, with a with a girl in it. You know, I was, and he's still running free. You know, it's like people get away with this shit, you know. Yeah. And All if you time. got more money and you got, you know, influence, it's like, yeah, you're going to get away with it. And it's mm -hmm. L.A. I mean, no one yeah. wants to mess with Scientology, especially the police, especially the judiciary system. They get I money know that's why them. they keep they get states. money from them. So I know. And that ties into the next question. Actually, you've been doing this brilliantly, Marcus. Yes, they do. And a lot of um, I think why my channel might be targeted or whatever is I 
what motivates me is the bigger picture, as I'm sure you know, guys. So I just use Scientology as a microcosm of the macrocosm. And then, you know, we were talking earlier about how, how Scientology runs like an intelligence agency slash mafia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those kind of at the top of the pyramid in our world, let's just say they're not um, empathic people. So I even have a video called The World Itself is Structured Exactly Like Scientology. So it can be used as a good model, not only to understand other cults that people are born in, but to assess uh, what's going on in the world stage. And that leads into the question that somebody asked about, which is a great question. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, this is from Uma Webb yesterday. Can you do a video on Project Stargate? And yeah, that ties into Ingo Swan and the OT7 Scientologist, Stanford University. I did cover that a little bit in episode six and seven of season two called the summer of psyops manson son of sam and scientology so that was touching upon that but i really want to do a video like that and the beauty of these live streams now is i don't have to sit for two months editing on adobe premiere trying to get everything to look perfect to do that video we can i'm going to do my homework we'll talk all about that era because that's on the list and we'll spend two hours with diagrams and everything breaking down the 50s and 60s and what was going on with the Scientologists, the Stargate program and all of that. But some of that was covered uh, on this on the series thus far. That's a great question. I think we covered most of them from yesterday. And that's a perfect time, Marcus. The time goes by so fast. So we're halfway through. It's the perfect time to ask you to start setting the stage for the full interview next Saturday. Mm. We're jumping a little bit of ahead. So we didn't get to Melrose yet, but could you briefly tell people what your post was when you were dealing with celebrities and kind of um, some tidbits on what that was starting to look like? Because it's a very um, unique position to be in and surely you had to be trusted to interact with the most important people in Scientology, right? You would think, right? <laughs> well, you had, you had something going for you, dude. They would yeah. not entrust you with that. But what was yeah, your post that kind of got you involved in all that? The post title is is field staff member in charge FSMIC, okay, uh, which is a uh, public executive uh, position six A or sorry six C sec. Mm -hmm. There's A B and C six div six being the public relations division, the pe people people that get you in. So, um, but it's the uh, I would say is rather nebulous of a of a job description. Yeah, but not um, in, not in what you did. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it, it still seems nebulous because it was almost as if I was, um, oh, I you see know, what you uh, mean. a, a, a non-registered uh, staff member hanging around public. Is it a real uh, post, Marcus, or did they kind of tailor make it for the Ventura mission and you? And we need to get your ass out there to pimp for the to get it, the celebrities it, it's in here. Both, it, like I got hatted on it. I went to Pack Base to do that, which is so. It's a real post, building. technically. Yeah. Now that was my that that was Travis's post was BSO. My post was FSO. Book store officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those were our posts when we uh, were training for in Ventura before we went to Melrose. And I was training uh, those posts at Pack Base while we were doing renovations. Me and John Jones uh, uh, at Pack Base during that at time. At Pack Base or Melrose. At Pack Base, we were building Melrose, and we were also going on course, John and I. At, he, he went to CC, and I went to uh, Pack Base, uh, which doesn't really kind of, that that right there is sort of weird, because it's like, why why would I not be going to CC if I'm going to be dealing with celebrities? Right. Right. Um, That's the question I had. Right. Why? Why, why would that be? That's well, why it seemed like your post is a little sneaky. Out, sneaky. Yeah, it Sorry. turns out that I mean, from from at least from my perspective now, that uh, you know, if you're on Pack Base, if you're near AO, if you're near Asho, you're a you're you're the, you're actually going, you, you know, you're not doing the baby celebrity center get pampered and right. you know, good point, spoon fed it to you. You're going mm -hmm. hard, you know, mm -hmm. you're going hard, and and uh, so there's this thing they call command intention in the Sea yeah. Org and uh, ethics presence. Yeah, and so just me being on stay on course at Pack Base would uh, would would sort of socially in the Scientology environment give me that sort of uh, rapport presence, whatever you want to call it, ethics presence. Yeah, ethics presence. So it, 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 in the hierarchy, which there's always hierarchies in in that uh, system, uh, it would have put me just a little bit. 
above an average public, you know, instead mm -hmm. of like a staff member, it was, it's like the, it was almost like a facade to be like, you know, I'm more on your level. Right. But I'm actually an HQS over qualified Scientologist at FSMIC and I'm being hatted with hard sell. Right. That was a mouthful that went right. Don't even bother to explain it, though, because I'm a loaded hour. I can explain it in a, in a whatever you call it, an idiom. Uh, they they basically took me and made a loaded weapon mm -hmm. uh, that could go into uh, the community, uh, whether it was with cold contact, direct contact, uh, indirect contact um, through love interests. To wow, flows that's right we'll get into that in the story yeah. dude it's a whole thing behind that one yeah absolutely um so you were kind of like in the infiltrator that would pose kind of as a public marcus to blend in with them because you're kind of the cool guy and you could be the mediator between not being too scary as a staff member i'd say travis Hank and i were both that and also dominic but probably travis and i the most i mean we did the open mic nights at melrose once we opened right. it and right. up leading up to that point, you know, uh, Hal Ozan and Rachel Minor were like major That's personal right. contacts of ours. They were personal contacts. That we there was a direct introduction, but uh, could I ask that, you about that? How did you go to even meet Hal? I know Hal. I could that guy. I thought we talked about him last night. He was so arrogant. I couldn't even talk to him. But how did you even <laughs> get? And Rachel, I knew Rachel um, mm -hmm. a little bit. She's married to. She was married to Macaulay Culkin, by the way. Mm -hmm. And how did you even get introduced, if you don't mind? How did that go down? Uh, there was a sort of like a field trip. We took the van, my van, really? uh, yeah, down to Melrose before it was going to be renoed, mm -hmm. like before we had done anything. And Kathy uh, was there, and uh, she was showing everybody, showing Rachel and how Rachel was a major donor. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, it was initially thirty thousand that she wanted that she put wow. into invest in a mission. Wow, I didn't know she put in that much. And uh, and so yeah, all of the staff that had been picked. Patrick Renna, Patrick um, Renna probably donated and yeah, right, right. So so we all go up there. I don't know if Patrick was there the first time, but um, it was probably about 12 people. Mike Beecher was one of them. These are names that, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know, but uh, Jessica Sterling was there. Hal was there. Rachel Meyer was there. Lindsay Bartleson was oh, there. Right. Um, who else? Some of the other people from uh, Hal's band were Scientologists from Poets and Porn Stars. Oh, right. I remember that. Um and some of the kids from Silver Lake, uh, the, a band called the Hanks, like they were all there. But that's them. where we met everybody. And so like there were. Wait, younger... wait, wait, Marcus, in one shot, you got introduced to what? All the celebrities just yeah, showed we... up and it was sort of greasing the line. Meet Marcus. He's going to be the guy that handles you. I mean, wh how did that kind of go down? man? No, no, it wasn't like it wasn't like I'm the one that's going to handle anybody. We had we also had the staff. We had John, Travis, uh monica right. uh kathy um and iris these are all people at the ventura mission by the way that i knew very well right that were all of them were laid down to... yeah yeah we all went to melrose we all we all went to melrose before it was built mm -hmm. and we had a little hangout it was really like a hippie thing like we had guitars and we were jamming like hal played some tunes me and travis played some tunes uh mike beecher played some tunes and uh and then we went on the balcony and smoked cigarettes and talked about ideas that came up with this whole concept for the melrose music league oh. this is a fundraiser to raise can we money. ever play any of that music uh on the next on the saturday show at all i don't know getting hit with copyrights uh, i'd love to hear that poets and porn stars pulled their entire catalog off of all of the distribution platforms uh except for one song and I'm pretty uh, sure that they I know that they got some placements uh, recently. So maybe the someone has either obtained their rights and is now like shutting it all off or makes sense. Um, whatever. But like anything poets and porn stars, probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, but gross reptilian monster probably could play that. The Hanks. gross reptilian monster. Wow. Yeah. This is uh, pre. Wow. That's. Fight Fellas, yeah. Boomstick, that's a great tune, but we probably can't play it because Aaron Larson is still very much a Scientologist. 
Um, really? Okay. To be yeah, discussed he's, when we talk about that. He's second gen and he's got third gen. I, so, oh, man. Um, Fargo probably could play that. Um, yeah, they're there. And then West Beecher. Oh, God. We I don't want to we don't want to listen to West Beach. Fair enough. I'll take your word for it. But here's the back of the thing. This was a CD that I had to work my ass off to. Can you put it up even closer to the camera, possibly? You worked your ass off for the production of it or the artwork? Because it looks like the production. I mean, this was was remember, and also remember this was two this is a CD that was produced in 2000 and what? Uh 2002 2003 i don't know Something yes like they're that. hundreds colonel um marcus i'm sorry to totally get you off track man that was no, my bad fine. but we'll definitely play some of those in in part two but i wanted to know so you monica and all those people from the mentor mission before the this thing is kind of how it started with the mm-hmm. networking yeah well what that saying. what do you mean the the band itself the music and yeah reaching them through the music you know um putting on a show, getting Patrick Renna involved. But the very initial meeting though, I yeah. how did you how did you sorry to get you off track, man. How did no, you actually no. meet these freaking people? Cuz at that at that thing that I'm talking about. We and what were good. they told? The celebrities just come on I, down and meet and greet I the don't have no mission, idea or? what they were told. I imagine Kathy and K- Kathy coordinated that with CC terminals and, I, and <laughs> Asho terminals and all that <laughs> right. shit, bro. And you guys just jam music and it was sort of a hangout meet and greet before okay that makes sense Mm -hmm. so how do you go from that you know hanging out jamming or whatever to actually getting as intimate um as you did with these people i don't mean sexually obviously but he was very (laughs) close to these people and selling them um i'm not gonna go there you just sparked off a joke uh morbid i i love (laughs) um, cynthia's gonna fucking know (laughs) she's gonna I don't know who um, Angel is, by the way. I thought that was Morbid Angel that you had typed in there, Debbie. Mm-hmm. Metallica, man, I lost them at the Black Album. I thought they were cool up until Master of Puppets, but everything, most everything they put after that, I just can't jam with. Jethro Tull, absolutely. Good good mix there. But again, I'm getting off track. So you, how did you go to becoming Patrick's Terminal, um, Rachel's Terminal and all that? Was that a slow process or was there a calculated effort to get you in with these people to sell them stuff? both it was a slow process and it was a calculated effort was it calculated on my part mostly no because like anything that i I have any idea that i had was just like nonsense right like because i'm uh is that your girlfriend by the way i'm sorry (laughs) okay stop that (laughs) cynthia Uh, who's monica you got to watch the previous videos to get the inside joke jake i'm not going to keep sidetracking marcus shame on you for doing that uh, (laughs) cynthia you're the one who i couldn't help pulling it up sorry man go ahead okay so uh yeah the there was like targets um targets and goals basically really organization applied tech to the field the field meaning people meaning terminals meaning Mm -hmm. access points data points really if it's really how scientologist brain works on data points absolutely so uh people are just more data points and the more data points that you have the more uh information calm lines terminals connect 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 the dots and um so there were you know there's the infamous thing that i've said multiple times about where i was supposed to go reg rachel Mm -hmm. but uh the there were other things too you know um like getting lindsey barlson on ot3 really Um, could you tell us about that man uh well lindsey so this would have been after jessica and i had uh me, me and jessica hit it off like right off the bat and and uh we were trying to like date but i was on staff and i was living at the mission with john on some insulation you know so like Mm -hmm. scheduling a a date it was like weird but we managed to go on a couple and um there were some uh different little art shows there was a photography photography show that she had put on um and and also uh artwork uh from local artists that was down there on melrose and uh that's who we're talking about guys 
She's a Scientologist and is uh, to this day, I believe. Is she really? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sure she is. We would hear about her coming out since she was so um, into the cult. The people that we're talking about, by the way, and Marcus, what you're reminding me of, they do have a lot of celebrities. But as you guys probably know, it was in the 80s and 90s in particular when they got a lot of celebrities. Lindsay was on a show. What was she on? Grounded for Life or something? Grounded for Life was what she was on whenever... Yeah, and Masterson in his heyday, all the way up until he got booted off in 2017 on the ranch. They're, but they're all basically like C-level actors. But at the time that we were in, these people were a big deal. The only one really left that is a big deal is, of course, Tom Cruise. I wouldn't say John Travolta fits that anymore because have any of you guys see Gotti? I mean, that pretty much tells you where his <laughs> career is at. That was, bro, I love getting high and watching that movie. I've seen it probably 10 times. It is the funniest thing to see someone trying to be something he's not. That that role is completely out of his range. And I think he's a good actor. But man, right. that movie's funny if you guys want to want to laugh your ass off. I've heard, I've, I've seen the reviews are terrible, but I haven't yeah. watched it myself. Yeah, the, um, you know, the, the, there was like mentions of uh, like, well, maybe you ought to go. I would yeah, say that's around, right. Good call. <laughs> Sorry. I, she fucked. I cannot believe I forgot Elizabeth Moss. She's definitely oh, yeah, a big, she's a big celebrity because of that show where she talks out about the very thing that she's a victim of and can't see. Wow. You know, her show, what the hell? Handmaid, Handmaid's Tale. She's yeah. literally doing a Scientology thing without realizing that she's in that. That's how good they can teach you how to act. Exactly. That's how good they can create the cognitive dissonance in your mind. I don't really have a favorite adult beverage. I don't either because I don't drink. I used just, to drink, but that was a long time ago. Um, yeah, so there was like a 2D flow that someone had noticed, which means like someone noticed that she noticed whatever. With who? With Lindsay. You and, and you, dude, you, by the way, can I just interject on Marcus's behalf? Cause I don't think he'll say this out loud. He had a lot of opportunities, which I promise you we'll cover in, in the two part in the Saturday's episode. Cause we're skipping over so much, but he had a lot of women throwing himself at him in the cult, uh, even afterwards, which I'm extremely jealous of. Cause some of the people, I won't say anything. You don't want me to Marcus, but let's just say that some of the people I had my eye on you fucking bastard. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and there's a limited there's a limited know, throwing throwing uh that kind of ties into mm, never mind something no one's ever we, thrown themselves on me but well, let's just say you had good 2d flows while you were uh, uh in scientology yeah and afterwards yeah, yeah. and uh, i could have really done i could have really done some i could have really fucked up honestly i know the that's what i was hinting at but um the uh so so a lot of times I would be sitting around or me and Monica would be trying to figure out how the hell are we going to sell this amount of books, right? Because you got all of these ridiculous things that 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 uh, are being hatched in the uh, brain trust of the executive director's office at Melrose, mm -hmm. which is Kathy and uh, Chris Baumgartner and Iris and... and Jim on the phone and right, right. whoever, uh, Vicky on the phone, like, okay, what can we get? Who can we get on the bridge? Wow. We need to get someone up the bridge. Who's going to, who's it going to be? You know, ha ha ha. And what can, who can we, who can we implement to go talk to who? And so like, I wasn't always privy to this in, in, in the, the room, the executive director's office of Melrose was pretty soundproof. So we never really heard much, but uh, you know, like, Someone uh, would be in LA on Melrose. And, mm -hmm. um, I had a vehicle, so like we could navigate around to Pack Base. We could go to, we could go sell books at places, but it would also put us the ability to sell books wherever we want. Essentially, can we could use that as a locator mechanism to be around a certain area that you know someone may be at like cc uh and we get uh information on course times when is lindsey bartleson's course time periods when is rachel's course times when is hal on course when is patrick renna on course and what are they on what actually really you it's guys are paying thing. that much attention to him shit that's well that, scary, that's what dude. happens at ventura that's the same thing i know just it's just stamped scary. over to the 
Melrose mission. So, yeah, you know, you're right. but, but instead of everything being localized in Ventura, where like after course, you just, Jim would grab you in Melrose and in LA, we would have to locate the people, you know, and, um, for whatever action it was, whether it was to read someone to, mm-hmm. to get some books or something, or to put on a show to get more people to come to promote our open mic that we had at Melrose, um, things like that were targets and, um, and the battle plans were like, you know, getting some without offending CC, because if you take CC's public, that's a no, no without permission. You know, we, we couldn't take Rachel from CC. We couldn't take, uh, any of those celebrities from CC. We would have to get their friends. So, you know, um, uh, people like Rachel Weston or, uh, or people, friends and acquaintances, even, even acquaintances, people that they worked with in the industry. Um, so, uh, and then also street traffic. So you run into celebrities on, on Melrose and just in the street. Wait a minute. You would disseminate to non Scientology celebrities on the street that would walk by. Oh yeah. No way. Could you have any name that pops up of someone you actually tried to sell a book to or get oh, into that Melrose yes. mission? Dude, really? David David Spade, I tried to sell him no a book way, dude. in front of he Urban was... Outfitters and <laughs> I know where that is. Are you shitting me? <laughs> no. Wait man. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta back up a little. You had the confidence to walk up to David Spade and try to sell him what? A dinette? Get him book. to go to Mount really? Yeah, because he was right there. It was like, dude, oh I, if I can God, get you dude. one block I just need to get him one block in. Right. <laughs> Holy shit. Because sometimes we'd be way down and someone wow. would be like, yeah, I'm interested. And then we'd start walking yeah. and they'd be like, oh, I'm getting kind of tired. They I hear you. About it. And and you guys waiting. are like predators. They grab people and try to get them back to the lair that's oh, just a block away. And that was your you. thinking, right? It's only a block away. Yeah. There, there were wow. some really in Ventura, especially me and Jason Rutland doing our body routing stuff, which is the whole 6A uh executives uh public executive type stuff because you can't just have anybody out there trying to you know um who can't communicate well exactly saying hey follow me you know you get reports from the police you know right great Um, point so but we had people follow us into you remember the parking lot at ventura Mm -hmm. this is just like way in the back dark alley we get people to follow us all the way back there like they could have been murdered, man. I mean, oh my God. Were they scared when you, well, some first of them, of... yeah, some of them took right off. Like they're like, wow, this is too shady. But what happened uh, with, uh, as an example, what happened when you approached Spade? How did that calm cycle go? Uh, so like he was getting into his hot ass, you know, yeah, expensive, multi-billion tiny billion dollar car, car. And, um, and he was kind of looking around and people, there wasn't a lot of people that had noticed him and, and nobody really fucking with him. So, uh, I made, he has sunglasses on it and, and I, but I made eye contact with him <laughs> and I was like, I, I did a little head thing and I start walking straight towards him oh, and he's, my God. he's kind of like, uh, oh, fuck. Okay. So he keeps the door open mm-hmm. and I walk up to him with the book and I'm like, I do my patter, you know, like on I'm not, David's <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even acknowledging that he's David Spade. I'm not like, hey, you know, I and know you, you wouldn't are. because that's the arrogance that I had too. Yeah, I, I was better than anybody, let alone. Yeah, so basically, I, I didn't acknowledge he was David Spade, and and he also looked. Also, he's like, he was, <laughs> he's a funny guy. Apparently, uh, you know, he's look. He looks at the book. He looks at me. He's like. Oh no! See you later, he man. Saw the, he saw the book, dude. He saw the freaking Dianetics book. Yeah. You had it in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny, I had a single dude. copy. In my that hand. is fucking funny. Mm-hmm. He was willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Just another fucking asshole fan. Final sign, whatever he wants. You should have just said, "Can you sign my Dianetics book, dude?" That would have been the ultimate come on dissemination tool. I think that would have been a better choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Avril so, Levine was another one. Uh, Avril Levine, just strolling down yeah, Melrose. Yeah, you, her and her boyfriend. Who was her boyfriend at the time? Was he a celebrity? Uh, nobody we knew because I don't I remember don't who remember. her boyfriend she's was. Really short though. Well, she was way shorter than she I is. Thought. You can tell she's short just in the music videos and stuff. Yeah. Before we jump into other celebrities that you like, a predator uh, scared the shit out of him and tried <laughs> approaching him with the Dianetics book. Mango, I know, I, you know, he was going to come on and we were going to do a live stream 
several times over the last couple months, but it hasn't happened yet. I reached out to him, I texted him the other day and I haven't heard back from him, which is unusual. I think he's okay, man. He's just busy in life. He's doing his own thing, you know, and it's okay to take often breaks. We, it is. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do this forever either. You know, I don't want to make a career out of just talking about Scientology or anything. Um, so I'm sure he's moved on with his life. He sounds like he's doing really good. But I hope to get him on so we can do a live stream as soon as he's, I can hear from him. Um, yeah, what, for sure. What happened with Avril Levine? Did you have the audacity, young man, to walk up with a Dianetics book to her and her boyfriend? Well, her boyfriend kind of like stepped in front and was like, oh, I'll check it out. She's, you know, really? She's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very open minded, as they would yeah, say he in bought, Scientology, he bought the which book, is not a good thing. Basically, really? to get rid of him. Yeah. Get Interesting. Rid of him. And I'm, I'm trying to think if it was either <laughs> me and Travis funny. or me and Dominic or me and Monica, because like those days we would walk so, like, they, we would walk and walk and walk and walk. And then, and then we'd get these targets, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, go do this make this happen like what like get like well there was like an, an event there was an event in, in laurel canyon that that mm -hmm. kathy wanted to do she wanted a big party rent that 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 blue um uh mansion that's on laurel canyon right the, well there's many mike, what well it used to be mike tyson's it has the the tiger cages and it's got okay i've seen that on tv yeah, yeah. and uh i didn't know that was in laurel yeah. I think it's Laurel Canyon, yeah. Probably is. That's where everybody literally stays at. So big party there. And and so I reached out to uh Rachel and Hal and Patrick and Jessica. And we all reached out in different ways. Travis mm -hmm. reached out and I reached out different people. We we were sort of trying to test the water, see who likes who. Like, you know, not everyone's gonna like me, not everyone's mm -hmm. gonna like Travis. The right. Way, you know, Hal and I really had good rapport, and so did him and Travis. Really? Uh, like I but, said, I couldn't even get that guy to, I think I said hi to him. It's whatever. Yeah. He was a big deal at the time. He was one oh, of the yeah. Scientologists. It was not only a famous actor. He's on Dawson's Creek at the time, but he Dawson's also Creek, had the band, which Michael Pena also had a band um, while he was, you know, cracking into the act. There's a lot to say about Michael, by the way. Like I tried to snake my girlfriend and he, uh, he got into it in a very interesting way. And who else had a band that also... You know, it's very hip and trendy to be a famous actor and also have a band. And there was one other Scientologist, not Beck, because he was never really an actor. But wasn't mm. there one other Scientologist? How how was known for doing the dual thing? Oh, we got Danny Masterson, DJ Donkey Punch. I don't care about the algorithm. I'm, I mean, you know, anytime you say a word on YouTube, fuck that, you know. Um, that's the beauty, by the way, of not being monetized and giving a crap about the views. Because everybody else has to talk around these freaking words. And it's like, we know what you're saying. Just freaking say it. So he um, he would go under the moniker of DJ Donkey Punch, which, by the way, was not admissible in court. Understandably so. But that's another clue as to uh, who you were dealing with. And that was back in 2004, 2005. Carol Masterson was my acting manager, and that's Danny's mother. So I would go over and drop off headshots at her house right when this was all going down. I couldn't understand why Carol wasn't focusing more on my career. And it was just basically about handling yeah, Chris and Danny at that time. But little did I know behind the scenes, he was in deep shit. And um, what was my point on that? Uh, I, I, don't, I fucking forgot. Sorry to interrupt, dude. I just there's just so many threads that are going off, which we we. We're going to cover yeah, they're, they're, it when we lay it out. LA, in when you're in oh, LA. right. Juliette Lewis. That's who I was thinking of. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we can really call her a musician. I know you would disagree with me of that, Marcus, but I'm telling you, it's just not. She, some people are really good actors like she, and then they think they're musicians, singers or songwriters, but some just aren't. I would put her in that category, but I think, I I think, think she's a you like that band, right? a badass performer. performer. She's a great performer, but the vocals brother. I don't know. She's just. I mean, I, I've always liked her because she's a freak. We were I just talking listen, about. I don't jam her shit or anything. I really don't. But I feel you. And you know, you I know what I like about Julia? Like ACDC, but for girls. Yeah, that's well. It's like said. an ACDC band, but it's, but it's like not executed that singer. well, brother. I know it could have been a great. Exactly, I think that's what she was going for. But she, she's one hell of a performer. You know what I like about Juliet? I didn't, I didn't get to meet her, but I, I knew Lightfield Lewis, her brother, because he would shoot all the demo reels for the actors. And that's how I met Rachel, by the way, because he would always grab right. the actors to use for the demo reels. Mm -hmm. he, um, we were just talking about this before we went live. There's a lot of geeks in Scientology that want the power trip and shit, but there was a few people like Nick Lashaway, my best friend, RIP, um, and you, 
and Juliet, who were rebels even in Scientology. So Juliet's a full-on Scientologist, but she's a dilettante, kind of like Danny Masterson, where mm -hmm. they're their second, third generation. They don't really do too much Scientology. I don't even think Danny's gotten up to clear. I think Juliet might have gotten up to clear. But that would, have, that would have been a while back too, you know? Yeah, exactly. Who knows where they stand now, but she would still be a Scientologist, you know, but not on the outskirts. She doesn't, you know, she's done a lot of things. This is a great question to bring up because it's come up a lot. If, can you do certain roles? Can you play a pedophile? Can you play something that paints Scientology in a bad light? Everything about Scientology is about that tone scale that me and Alex and Catherine covered a couple days ago. So anybody below 2.0, which is anger on that tone scale, is basically a bad person until they get up the tone scale. So if you act out roles that um, not necessarily paint Scientology in a bad light, but are low on the tone scale, that's a real concern up to the point that you actually make it and you become somebody that's a big deal. Then you can do whatever the hell you want as a celebrity. And again, when we go into Marcus's story, we'll show you the difference between how celebrities are treated and how the public in Sea Org are treated because there's different levels. And I'm still having my mind blown by what you've been telling me because I didn't know there was that big of a difference. I thought they had to follow policy, only do acting roles that are 2.0 or higher on the tone scale and all that, but it's not like that at all. No, I would say that she's the, I mean, people like that and Lisa Marie and, 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 and like the, right. the really Lisa high Marie. level people, like they don't, they get to practice Scientology as, it's Great. offered in the in the beginning like oh it's you know you can do it and use what you want and not use what you want and whatever yeah as long as you've got the money exactly they and won't status. bother you with the fucking ethics and the, all the other trash until you un until it becomes a means to control the money again but as long as the money is there like i mean i see i i, I only met juliet once but what i saw kind of was like you know she can just come and go and do whatever and maybe do a course but nobody was going to be pressuring her and that was a big thing in the uh uh dave pettit's office like if someone mm -hmm. was in dave pettit's office he's the staff, president by the way of celebrity center just want to throw that in there is he still i don't know well he, he was, was then mm -hmm. and um if if any staff co uh, so staff member from cc was in dave pettit's office it was usually because they were being pressured by their seniors to get a product out of a celebrity and mm -hmm. they pushed too hard and dave pettit was there to just rip their head off about it i can imagine and those celebrities don't even re you know maybe they realize maybe they don't that you know what their their little offhand comment like I don't like the way he talked to me, you know, I, yeah, that's I don't enough. Be, that's enough to put him in ethics. That, yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. I saw that. And not I just, that. not just bad, not just, not just regular ethics. Like I feel you. you. It's a big deal is what Marcus is saying. If the, those, if that Scientologist interacting, um, who's on staff interacting with a celebrity, if that celebrity makes any quip about, I don't like this little thing, it could just be an offhand comment. That staff member will put, be put through hell in ethics. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. He even had a policy called Project Celebrity, which will actually break down during Marcus's interview about just how important and why they're important. It's obvious that the celebrities are going to uh, sell Scientology the most, but wait until you see the policy on it called Project Celebrity. Marcus, if you don't mind, I wanted to take up a couple of quick questions because yeah, we're going questions. by here fast. And I got them. Um, this is a great, uh, I completely forgot about Catherine Bell. I had a massive crush on her and my heart was broken when I found out she was gay. More power to her, but damn it. How many I guys' didn't... hearts did she break? You ever know her? Let me you ever see. run across her? I don't know. That seems like she would have been I'll bring her up, man. more recently. Let's bring her up here. Catherine oh, Bell. Okay. Yeah, she, she looks familiar, but I don't, I don't. Maybe at one of the g g galas. She was kind of, you probably would wouldn't, been, Marcus, just because she was always no. kind of on the outskirts. Yeah. Uh, I, I only saw her once. The galas are where you would see the, the, the people who were being brought in by celebrity FSMs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The so. only time I saw her, and she's absolutely gorgeous, and she's super tall. My God, she's one stunning presence, was at the AOLA when she was doing the OT levels on L. Ron Hubbard Way. 
I wonder what she's doing nowadays. She's probably still working. Ju jailbreak lovers. See, this would be something right there on just the title alone, probably, where mm -hmm. that would be very downtown in Scientology. But Catherine, you know, here's another example of she came out as gay as a Scientologist. And as far as I know, she still is a Scientologist. And I know they're trying to be more LGBTQ friendly and they want to <laughs> kind of break that stigma. But nonetheless, behind the scenes, they would look down on somebody like Catherine for being gay, for sure. But because she brings in the money and she's a celebrity, she's treated specially. If you're not a celebrity, they'll put you through endless auditing and try to break your gayness, literally. And I've talked about that in the videos. I'd say it's, the same goes for uh, staff, too. You know, like there's a like uh, certain staff that, that uh, have like almost like a permanent imp like uh, bulletproof know, vest that protects them, you know, and, yes. and, and it, it, it spans the divisions like certain divisions are are, are more um, uh, aggressive and, and brutal than others, you know, like it's all compartmentalized. Yeah. Div, Div six is like and if, if you ask any. Any, I would, I would argue, if you ask any uh, Sea Org member, staff member, or field staff member, like what is the most uh, <laughs> difficult and 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 uh, uh, nerve wracking job mm -hmm. and stressful job on the org board? It's mm -hmm. Div Six, public, Hands right? Down. Dealing with public. Yes. I think Alex would say the same thing, apostate Alex. He he was a bookseller and had to interact Nothing with the public. Stressful. I could tell you as a public, just that was the the post that I hated the most. Um, even my <laughs> the most I ever got a taste of that, Marcus, and dealing with the public was doing the tone scale drill on Hollywood Boulevard. When wow. I just remember this biker crowd. I hated I was on the PTSSP wow. course that stands for potential trouble source slash suppressive person. And it's a course to get all the people out of your life that are talking shit about Scientology and that are suppressive, basically. And one of the drills is we'd have to go down from Celebrity Center to Hollywood Boulevard, which is a short hop, skip, and a jump away. And I'd always go pack this biker gang that knew we were Scientologists. And everybody knew what the tone scale drill was because we'd all hang out on Hollywood Boulevard doing the stupid drill. And what we had to do is spot people's tones. So I would like look at the bikers and stuff. As soon as I we even walked past them, they would... Uh, you know, let's fucking fight, bitch. What's up, Holmes? Come on, man. You fucking Scientologist. I'll fuck your shit up. You know, it's like, fuck, man. We just like run past those people. And really, uh, you didn't do the drill? I, dude, everybody on Hollywood Boulevard, even it seemed like the tourists knew we were fucking Scientologists and they knew what the drill was. They already had a sus because we were, wow. that's where we'd all go. And the bikers, no especially, they love, they'd throw shit at us and stuff. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> It, um, it seemed like it, they were going to beat our ass. You know, that's, that's oh, a, that's, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, up and down Melrose, there was there were several business owners and, and even just people that lived in the area, that, you know, you fucking cult member, blah, 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 yep. and talk shit. And then, you know, I, I'd only been spit on once, but I was spit on. And I remember feeling really degraded, man. Like, you know, this motherfucker just spit on me. For being a for what what was for, the circumstance when you got for being on? a Scientologist just simply for being a Scientologist were you doing a tone scale drill how I did you find out that I was just walking it was well known that I was a Scientologist in the area I'm walking up and down the streets with the fucking Dianetics books all the time <laughs> how would you handle that by the way if someone not how would you handle that because what what would go off in your mind when people would say cult member cult member cult member uh, what, what was going off in your head dude. I would say that it was like um, uh, like uh, one of those recursive loops that would kick in and be like, yeah, this is, you know, the, the world that they see is not the world that I see. So it reinforced your belief, right, in yeah. Scientology. Mm -hmm. it's a, I just wanted you to point that out because it's exactly what it did to me and anybody that's in Scientology. Anytime you criticize a Scientologist like that, you really are pushing them into their belief because you're proving how bad and evil the outside world really is. I don't know, Elizabeth, how many celebrities and I assume you're asking like how many celebrities in general are crew supporters. A lot of people like Seth Rogen and stuff, throw him under the bus and joke about him. Other people really look up to him. He's a divisive person. Just even doing a little clip with HG Tudor recently where it was called, Will Tom Cruise Ever Leave Scientology? And the comments you could see people, some people don't give a crap that he's a full blown psychopath and they just, but he's an amazing, some people would say he's an amazing actor. His stunt skills are impressive. I mean, he's kind of impressive in what he's able to do because he's fearless, which is one of the characteristics of a psychopath. 
And then people will put that aside and go, who gives a fuck? The guy's awesome. So he's very divisive. I personally try not to support him because he abandoned his kids. Mm. He's supporting a multi-billion dollar cult. And that's enough for me to have my own personal opinions and act on him with this guy. But a lot of people that don't have investment in Scientology, they think we're just bitching about him too much without necessarily knowing or caring about his backstory. I think he's a very disgusting person and that the acting skills aside, I don't give a fuck about that. I was an actor and a lot of a lot of the um, people in Hollywood are narcissists and I, I found the place mostly disgusting. That's why I'm not I'm not motivated to go back. That's another story for another time. We had another question here. Alex had a question. Is that the one? Oh, the, I'm trying to get the ones that are um, Go in order. From, from back before. Yeah, I haven't started or whatever. Hey, what's up, girl? I, I should have had, got Ron to sign all that stuff back in the day. I don't know. You're talking about Ron Miscavige, I assume. I Sorry, my friend. I didn't catch the previous thing. But you, I, I had to start because you sparked a thing where I actually got a picture of the midget, David Miscavige, in New York. He, I went down to help out the Sea Org members. I would never do that again for two weeks. And I worked like a Sea Org member getting the New York org ready. And when we were all done, dude, they worked their asses off markets. Like we were up 24 seven. We slept in shitty places and yeah. to shower. It's, everything was terrible, but it was electric. It was fun. So when we finally got it done, Miss Cabbage rolls up and I asked, can I get a picture with this God or whatever? I can't fucking believe I don't. I burned that picture along i took all my red and green Jeez. volumes i took the, and i put david That's miscavige so on the top crazy. and i fucking bonfired it you in, burned in the picture with david miscavige yeah dude. and all, i wish i would have kept all my books my clear bracelet i would i wish i had all this stuff and he really is super short i mean i towered over the dude uh but i put Bastion. my arm i put my arm around him and i could tell he didn't even like that i'm like dude, i'm not going Bastion. homo i just feel i just feel like this is the appropriate shot I can't yeah. believe I don't fucking have that. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you probably feel the same way, right? You should have kept all your stuff. But I wonder how many yeah. Scientologists mm -hmm. burn their stuff and get rid of it. And how I many burned a lot. I burned them. a lot of the... Uh, you I kept the hard whole... sale pack. Yeah, I know. I have a, Which is I'm great. I had somebody ask for that, by the way. They wanted to know. Oh, did an I'm interview sure. with the dude yesterday, and he wanted to know where I can get it. You can't get it anywhere, right, Marcus? You can try and find it. I mean, where would you even go about trying to find that? Google okay. it. I mean, you might find it on Google. Someone have one. You couldn't even find it in Scientology. It. it was a it right. was a rare pack, even in Scientology. I'm gonna grab that um, thing from Apostate Alex. Jeez, of course, dude. We've been going in almost an hour and twenty minutes. It really is amazing. It's impossible to keep these under an hour, Marcus, which we're trying to do because it just gets too engaging. Well, Fridays, I think we can do hours. Like we did good, mm -hmm. with, you know, yesterday and the in the time before. Like we. Did good. It was Fifty-four minutes, a little over, like slightly over an hour. Saturday, yeah, we're doing good. Okay, it's okay. We're doing, like I said, hour okay. and some hour and some change. Hour, you know, 60, 90, 60 to ninety minutes. It's fine. How about this, man? So we'll wind down, but we'll we're gonna answer um, yeah. questions that you guys have. So uh, please, we don't charge people money to ask questions. The channel's not monetized. It's all free. So just put question in bold or put at days, but not confused. So it'll show up and highlight in orange. And that will make me able to see these uh, a lot easier. I star them and then we go back, but we can't answer everybody's questions. But like we did in this time, I take notes of the previous video we did yesterday and we start off the video. So uh, I will probably even get to those too. But like I, for those joining us, oh, I got to do this fucking thing, dude. Marcus created this cool intro and stuff and he has this like middle thing to use for when you know people that are just joining us hey if you're just joining us welcome to flashback friday that's kind of too hypnotic and stimulating but we'll have to um, it's supposed to be <laughs> hypnotic <laughs> I know, it's so wee, good wee, wee, if you're wee. just joining us this is a, a new saturday program oh i wanted to ask you guys this will both help with the algorithm and this pushing the stupid video out because the more you inter interact uh, in the comment section the more the uh, AI comes alive and says, hey, this seems to be a popular video. Who cares what it's about? Let's push it out. One of the things that will help, which, which we would like your input on, is we're doing Saturdays now. We have a Saturday show, which isn't going to be every Saturday. But starting next Saturday, we're going to tell his story. And we need at least two hours to do it. So once in a while, we're going to do that. And we just want to name suggestions. Uh, smoke, smoke Saturday. Um, suck. I was going to say suck my dick Saturday. That's what the work. fuck. No, I'm just saying, guys, like anything you can because I'm trying to over think the line. The first market over zero. the line. Market, market zero. zero. Market fucking All right. zero. All right. Calm down. Market zero. Jesus. 
anyways, guys, in the comments, if you don't mind leaving a suggestion, obviously we're looking for double S's here, you know, smoke out Saturday, whatever. This is where we let our hair down. We get a little more loose and talk about all just, just stuff that isn't normally talked about, man. Cause, um, because it's not, <laughs> I know Alex, he, this, this man has been crushing on me and 2d flowing me for so long that I'm seriously thinking about taking ethics actions, young man. Now I love this fucking guy. He is I can answer an incredible question, friend. By the way, I'm sorry to remove had. that, by the way, let me throw that back up there. Um, stand by. <laughs> Okay, Colonel Bark, I see your question. I got it started. Let me just go back to Alex. Damn it. Okay, there you go. Take it away, sir. This, by the way, is a lovely Cynthia and her cute-ass dog, which I keep forgetting the Lulu. name of. Lulu. Who looks innocent enough. She's 17 years old, by the way. In dog years, I think that's 109 or something. Right, Marcus? 107? I don't know, math, dude. I don't know. She looks sweet, guys, but the stories they told me about this young, this uh, cutie yesterday was worse than the stories I've heard about Scientology. But you'd never suss it, would you? Look at those eyes. She's so psychopath. Bad. So the answer no, is no. to this question is, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I would. Oh, oh, wait a minute. How would you respond to a public asking you if there's anything you disagree with in Scientology? Great question. I would, I would almost every time say that there were things that I would just that I disagreed with. Really? That's what that's what he said the other day. Do tell more. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if it if someone says is there anything that you disagree with with mm -hmm. like let's just replace Scientology with a whole subject matter. Like say is there anything that you disagree with with environmentalists? It's like or or vegans. Mm -hmm. Or something like that right it's like a wholesale general general is a generalized statement like yes i agree with environmentalists well what about this and like well no I don't well we're, first of all marcus sorry to interrupt but were you ever actually asked that question in scientology absolutely you were really sure. okay how did you yeah. respond like i said yeah there's things i disagree with can we run a little drill of that real quick if you don't mind sure. live yeah, drill away Okay, I guess we'll throw in a trigger warning. When me and Postate Alex acted out a drill on his channel, we didn't know it was going to be so realistic. So it's, okay. you know, it's fine for us, but if, if you know, people, there's people out there that trigger are getting warning. over Scientology, so we don't want to act this out too good, but we're going to... I'm going to be a public, and Marcus okay. is going to be... Put on your Scientology hat. Snap oh, back it's been a long and, time since I've done this. All right. I can method act it immediately. Like okay. it is, I'm sure you'll go right back to it. But let's say I walk up to you and I say... I noticed you got that Dianetics book in your hand and you look kind of like a predator and you're like going up to people on the street and trying to get them into that building over there, that Melrose building. I've been watching you. Uh, don't you know? Well, before I ask you, don't you know what Scientology is? Because it's an evil cult. Is there anything at all with Scientology that you personally disagree with or do you think it's all lovely? Um, well, first of all, I'm sorry that I come across that way. Mm -hmm, you do yeah um this is this is sort of my area that i was assigned to to work to, you work to, for scientology yeah yeah i'm a staff member i see so what we do is we you know disseminate our materials to people who are interested in learning about what dianetics is the modern science of uh, mental health do you yourself know what dianetics and scientology is don't you know what the founder's background is yeah, I'm actually an auditor myself. Uh, book one. Oh, that's where they hold auditor. the soup cans and that silly thing. You believe? No, in that? actually, that is not the. Uh, uh, not that's not Dianetics. This is Dianetics. Yeah, I've seen that crappy book. That's the volcano ad that they had in the '80s. If you want to handle your 2D problems, or I wouldn't say that. If you want yeah, to you handle know, your family problems, page 54. You never saw it, so you don't no. know what you're involved in. No, I didn't see the commercials, but I got in, uh, I got involved with Scientology in Baton Rouge in around 2000, 2001. And I had a really bad condition uh, where I was hallucinating all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a detox program that they had. And there was like, I've heard of that. No they... hope for me. Like I, I was, I was okay. Did, you ever didn't take an people acid? die at that though? I remember hearing something about Narcan on Arrowhead or something where people were dying at that Scientology facility. Do I have that wrong? I'm not sure about that. 
Uh, I might have that wrong. I, I thought, though. I've heard bad things about Scientology. The, usually, it just depends on the source, right? Like, where mm -hmm. you're getting the information from. Sometimes, I mean, not, not all news is, like, you know, the truth, even though they may report it. So, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, but no, the, the, uh, the, the book itself, uh, this... The Dianetics book is actually one of the things... I don't I need do. to be sold on it. I just want to know if there's anything that you disagree with in Scientology. That's what I was going to say. Is oh, that sorry. The, no, no problem. The, the, I was going to say that what I do agree with is in Dianetics. Like the, the book one, especially book one. Book two, there's a whole uh, other set of processes. Just give it to I me in layman's terms. You're already losing me. I don't know what book two is. I don't know okay. your cult garbage and whatever. Just, <laughs> right. Just, so basically know. it's a modern, it's a modern take on mental health as opposed to going no, to it's a psychologist. Not. No, it's not. I'm sorry. I'll let you finish. I just want to know what you freaking disagree with in Scientology, not be sold on it. Okay. So what I, I got that. I understand. Um, I mean, do you work in the area? Do you see me here? Like, yeah, you know, I work or... right across the street and I keep seeing you, like I said, like a predator every fucking day. You tried gotcha. to pull a David Spade the other day for fuck's sake. And you got right. in his car and looked like he was terrified. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that to people? What do you disagree with? We all know what Scientology is. Why don't you see it? Well, I mean, I, I could disagree with, uh, you know, some of the, uh, what would you disagree some... with? Well, I, I would I really wouldn't disagree with with much in terms of uh, of the the what is in in the material so much as how people apply it because you can do something incorrectly and get the wrong you know the wrong result the result you were not that sounds like for. you were programmed to say that as a Scientologist that sounds like something you're just repeating back from Hubbard. Right. Well, I mean, you know, how do you feel about it, dude? Have you run into anything while well, being in this? I won't call the cult out of respect for you, but have you seen anything in and around you or in the tech, as you call it, that you disagree with? You haven't even answered the fucking question. You just keep trying to sell me on Scientology. Stop being all positive. Stop repeating back what Hubbard said. How do you feel? I got that. <laughs> You're doing great, by the way. You're totally handling me. I'm just trying to give it, give it to you, you know, like that. Well, this is a oh, let's let's pause right there, right? Yeah, and and it is, I'll step in as coach here because that that is, was really good, by the way. That really is a uh, a way to keep things from escalating. It was you did that really well. And, I mean, and, I felt myself being de-escalated. Right. So, like, and that that you know. That shit did happen on the street in Melrose. Absolutely. All pretty the time. close to what we acted out, right? And that's yeah, exactly close, how you yeah. would I handle mean, it. And our downstairs neighbors, like, they hated us. So, I like, know. we deal with that all the freaking time. I bet, dude. Every single day. Like, Bill was the guy who owned the place. Uh, Bill owned uh, Golden Apple Comic Book Store. And uh, he was downstairs smoking cigarettes. And, and he would really just lay into us, you know? So... You got to have thick skin and you got to be drilled on all of that stuff. I can like, see your I drilling mean, kicked in right away, brother. That was so Scientology, what you just did. Yeah. So Scientology. You didn't get you. mad. You didn't get, you just handled me. Can right. we, okay. I didn't want to cut your calm, but is there anything <laughs> else you wanted to say? Because I'd like to keep, this is interesting for me, dude. Can I keep yeah. pressing you on this and yeah, you, you sure. keep handling me? Uh, I will say this. There mm -hmm. is a point, right? There is a point where there is like, you know, as a, as a div, div six where you realize, okay, I'm not going to get a product here. I see. So what do you do we, then we can continue. We can continue. Okay. Let's point. keep going. And then maybe so I said, I got that. And cause you were being a little aggressive and hostile and your tone was dropping. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I said, I got that. Now it's up to me to either decide how, if I'm going to match your tone level. And right? this would really be going off in your head. Yeah. I just wanted to, I know the answer to that, but we covered Apostate Alex, it. Catherine, and us it did, did, did the tone scale. And this, this is a perfect example of what's going off in a Scientologist's head about trying to go 0.5 higher. Could you also right. very briefly explain why that is, Marcus, why you think that would work? I know the answer to that, but can you explain it to the audience? Well, why you're, why you're doing that? So you know, I haven't done it yet. I've maintained like a stable, pretty much right. one tone. 
I've, I've, uh, and I don't know what tone that is. I, I would say maybe you. boredomish, uh, uh, to, to slight, that sounds about right. she, slight, cheer, slight, whatever the slightly happy or cheerful is kind that of monotone. Right. You, you didn't go, what you didn't do, which most people I call do, it three is go into anger. You didn't attack me right. when I was attacking you, which is, which is what makes a Scientologist because most people react right away. Mm -hmm. This also can be an example of what gives Scientologists the apparent special power to an outsider that's new. Because yeah. they don't react in the same way. They're very cordial, See, just like he At he handled. this point, I would be really willing to like go forward and 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 say, look, look, you know, dude. It's not like your I, thing. I get that. It's it, yeah. Well, no. No, no, no. I was gonna let's, go let's, don't, don't say what don't say what you're gonna do if you don't mind, Marcus. Can okay. we just pick it up from yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, give, I'll give you the la I'll give you the last line. So what I'm having problems with <laughs> is like trigger I said, warning. I trigger see warning. You. Okay. Did start. Trigger warning. Okay. See, we got some tough cookies in here, though. But if it does bother Unfazed, anybody, just, yeah. just don't nice. don't be afraid to let us know. We don't want to overstimulate anybody. Okay. Scientology word. Like I said, man, I'm trying to be a passive observer here, but it's pissing me off that I have this business and I keep seeing you being a predator on these people. And I just still haven't gotten an answer to my question, which is, what do you personally, I don't want to hear you repeat Scientology babble. What do you personally have a problem with in Scientology? It can't all be good. Well, I mean, in terms, in the terms that you're describing, I don't have a problem with anything in Scientology. See that right there, my friend, is a sign of being an occult. I know you don't believe that, but everybody would have some problem with their job unless, not necessarily, but that's what they call a red flag. Have you ever looked at that? Have you ever thought? Because we on the outside, my friend, we see the abuses. I know you say everything on television is bullshit, but we see what goes on behind the scenes and we're wondering why you can't see it. So have you ever inspected what's going on? Have you ever seen any abuses personally? There has to be something that you disagree with or have been shocked by. Have you ever I, been into the, the center down the street? No, and I wouldn't go into it because I know what you guys are about. Well, you say that, but, you know, and you're asking me if I can see what's going on like i'm there every day and mm -hmm. so you know if you want to see what's going on in there and see how terrible you think it is then i i'm i'm giving you free reign to do so you know fair like, enough. i mean that's a fair that's a fair response but i feel like if i go in there you're going to mind control or hypnotize me or do something weird because you guys freak me out you know what you can come in and just sit on the couch i don't trust you guys <laughs> That's how you get people in, right? That's what I've well, been you, seeing you walking up and down the streets. If it's so great, why wouldn't people just walk in? And why do you charge a bunch of people money? People do walk in. Because you walk. get them. I've seen you, dude. Yeah. They, just, they rarely been. walk in there. And every time I see them walk in, I my heart skips a beat because I'm like, get out. I believe you. You know, you. know, I believe you believe what you're saying. You know, yeah. you're going to take me in there. You're not going to do anything to me and electrocute me or anything. But clearly no. you haven't been sussing or viewing what the outside world sees. You guys come across very scary. And the well, very fact that you don't recognize something's wrong, that's the question I have. I don't understand how you couldn't see abuses and stuff going on like we do in your organization. I mean, yeah, my I friend, I see you sleeping on the fucking balcony at Melrose <laughs> while you're building. That's not normal working conditions. What say thee to that? Well, I mean, uh, we're pretty, I'm pretty committed to what I'm doing. Like I said, I found this book years ago, a couple years ago, and it, saved, and it saved my life. So, what I'm doing right now is sort of it's called mission work, and uh, it's I not a Mormon, like a Mormon, yeah, or any other like even Catholics, any other religious group, where they you know take a certain amount of time and dedicate it for whatever reason. And in this case, my reasoning is that I feel like my I was able to reclaim my life, so I'm going to give two years. I'm happy for you for that too. I'm not trying to yeah. discount that. What was it in particular that caused Scientology to save your life? uh the uh purification rundown yeah yeah that's where you lose me bro because like i said i saw this documentary on television which i know you're going to say is bs but there was three high profile deaths at narconon arrowhead in 2017 yeah i, so I just know admission. too much about it i, I did i I'm, I'm i am familiar with those and i have oh you are yeah, so what yeah, do you yeah. say about that like years work but theirs didn't they died my friend well you got narconon is actually not a scientology oh but it is oh. that's where you're wrong too that's why i say you need to look more into the organization you're a part of because i think they're keeping stuff from you because they definitely yeah. are and you must know that as a scientologist that narconon's a front group you must you're lying to me right 
No, I mean, Narconons, you really don't know that? certain Narconons are controlled by individuals. And it's like a, you know, it's, it's essentially they're licensing the, uh, the technology and the program from the church. So the church isn't really involved in a lot of the, like Scientology, for example, is not involved in the inner workings of someone's an Arcanon. I understand what you're saying. It's all kept so that, compartmentalized. So right. you don't have any problem with Scientology. There's nothing wrong that you've seen so far. No, I don't see any problems in there. Okay. Um, well, best of luck, man. I'm going yeah, um, to probably too. still stay on you because, okay. like I said, I work right across the street. All right. I do I'll appreciate you being watching. open. I know you will, and that's no what problem. terrifies me. Okay. So that that's really good, man. I, I, <laughs> oh, my God, man. That's, that feels fucking weird. Yeah, man. You yeah, handle man. me really well, but you would get shit like that, right, Marcus? And even worse, people wouldn't hold hold back on calling you a straight up cult member and shit. Would any people ever challenge you with actual evidence, saying, "Hey, what about the deaths here? What about?" Or would they just say, "Cult member, fucking Scientology"? Zoom, there was bro. that. <laughs> there was all of that. There was actually a guy that came in once that uh, asked if we knew about the shape shifting reptilian. Um, that's David Ike. That has nothing to do with I know, Scientology. I know, yeah. but we actually brought him in as a potential like route on for which means like I reg him and get him on course and you make, him make a Scientologist. are making a great point, which I have to interject here. Mm. This brings us into QAnon, the reptilian slash David Ike conspiracy and Scientology, because I re and Alex Jones. Because I remember that Chris, this was mind blowing to me. The conspiracy realm and scientology go hand in hand not least because hubbard was a master conspirator he did know a lot about the players on the world stage but he's completely off i don't want anybody to think that he wasn't just spewing a bunch of gibberish when he talks about the 12 families and stuff in that infamous lecture he was both paranoid of the government agencies themselves and also knew a lot about it as we talked about he knew about project mk ultra in 1951 when it didn't even come out until 1953 officially and tried to expose it so he was in on the government shenanigans and again we'll do a deep dive on that when we get into the stargate episode or whatever but this is uh why a lot of people that come from q would be attracted to scientology and the conspiracy realm in general and freaking chris shelton said that as a sea org member when he was a sea org i think he said it was around 2015 ish or something i don't know when chris left do you know when chris left marcus uh, same year I did, 2015. Okay, perfect. So I, I have the date right. He said that he would use David Icke and Alex Jones to show people that the world's fucked up, there's a conspiracy, and Scientology has the answers. I think that's a very clever sell, man, because there is a lot of shit going on in the world, but they use those two. He said he would break out Alex Jones and David Icke videos for people that were already thinking like that, and that would easily lead them into Scientology's conspiratorial world because they have a model that's pretty similar. Would you say that's true? Did you ever, you didn't see that when you were in Scientology, but Chris said, and this is after I left, but Chris said they would literally use those two people specifically in session, in um, Sea Org recruitment sessions to get either people that were reaching for Scientology or public members that were already Scientologists to sign up for the Sea Org because the mission was that big and that, we were under that big of an attack. You know what I mean? I just thought that was fascinating. That that un, that relates, by the way, guys, why a lot of Scientologists are into Q. There's a guy that I'm thinking of that has this castle. Someone will be able to say what it is in the comments, but you know that Scientologist guy that's super rich that has that castle that he rents out for people to come visit, and he is always pro-Trump and pro-Q and Scientology? I think there's a lot of Scientologists that flip into that. I think Andy Nolch is another one that i don't know if andy nolch is an indie scientologist and people ask why he wasn't added to that list i can add him if you like but he's kind of a nutter in my opinion i mean he says so many things that are true and so many things that are q-esque that i felt bad about putting him on that freaking list do you know who i'm talking about marcus andy nolch and the whole q phenomenon or is that just okay some of you guys know what I'm talking about. And that question's come up a lot. Like, was people even wonder, was Scientology or was Q created by Scientology? I don't think so, but I think it's a complete psyop to lead people down a cul-de-sac, just what Scientology does. So uh, we covered a lot. It's an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, there's plenty more questions. I have them starred, guys. So we're going to start the next Friday with a few questions on that before getting into the meat of it. 
please join us for sure next Saturday where Marcus is going to tell his whole story from where we left off at the Ventura mission. And I always hate to go because there's just so much activity going on here. Bef before we go, oh, did good. you want to say anything, Marcus, or, you know, in, in closing or is there any final thoughts that you had on your mind? I, I love acting that shit out with you, man. That was a fucking trip. Some good insight too. Yeah. Um, we'll oh, okay. Up. You were joking about him. Okay. Hey, I don't mind adding him, Bill. I mean, if you think he's relevant, I put Scientology's channel up there just so people can see their side and everything, not to promote him. And I'm not full on and and anti Andy either because I've watched him progress and he definitely does not believe in Scientology anymore. Um, I don't know. He's an interesting character. I'd actually really like to interview that guy. Um, anyways, guys, I guess catch us. The, oh, I wanted to say this in closing. Poe on the go, please go subscribe to his channel. He um, He's a fascinating man, and he's been producing Scientology content. And me, Apostate Alex, and Poe will be doing uh, our Sunday, I think he calls it the Four Horsemen Chat. And Clearwater Chad will not only be giving the weather, I love that freaking guy. He, he really adds the humor element to a dark subject. He will not only be giving um, updates on the weather every 15 minutes, but he'll also be joining us. So please join us on Poe on the Go tomorrow. Postate Alex um, will be Thursdays at 2 p.m. We are going to be doing, well, I, I will save that one, but we know what we're going to do the next episode. That one's going to be cool. And every Friday at 2 p.m., for sure, you can um, see Marcus. And in the meantime, I really appreciate all the comments, guys, and the interaction. If you don't mind in the comments, like I said, to help out, please let us know what you'd like to name this Saturday show. And Marcus is doing shameless plugging on a song. We'll play that, bro, if you don't mind. Uh, next Friday, we'll open up with your music video of a song, Don't Give Up. I think people got it by now.